Mom gives birth, then the father realizes he isn't any baby, but the most comfortable approach to achieve a condition of psychological equilibrium is through love. Love serves as a protective shield against the psychological difficulties that humans experience, such as worry, loss, and sadness. Love is the only thing that keeps us feeling alive. A feeling of love is an unexplainable sensation that anybody can experience. Love is the fuel that keeps us going. Love is what allows us to feel safe and comfortable in our own skin. On the other hand, we must be extremely selective in our selection of the person we love and with whom we spend the rest of our lives. There are many married couples who are experiencing difficulties as a result of their inability to communicate effectively. There are also others who divorce their wives as a result of the pregnancy being delayed. The husband should be gentle with his wife, especially if she's pregnant after a long period of time. One of the most common causes of divorce is delayed pregnancy or infertility, which is the result of a couple's failure to understand how to deal with the problem of infertility or delayed pregnancy, and how to maintain their married life without having children, and that infertility or delayed pregnancy is not a reason to end the marriage or to divorce. Being optimistic is difficult, but we must never lose sight of our goals. The entire concept is based on the conviction that this horrible thing will not stay forever and that the world will change, and as a result, we see the world open its arms to us for a brief while. The more we stand up to the suffering of the world, the more positive we become. A romantic sequence sets the tone for the rest of the story. Louisa was walking through the university grounds, holding a large number of books in her hands. She was sprinting and rushing to get somewhere. A young man called Sandro was working in the opposite direction of her. A young man called Sandro was walking in the opposite direction of her. Both of them were walking in the opposite direction when they crashed with each other. He expressed his embarrassment by begging her, Please accept my apologies. That was completely unintentional on my part. Do not amass a collection of books. I'll take care of everything for you. The other person, Louisa, was likewise uncomfortable and told him, There's no need to apologize because I was moving quickly. There was a collision. I'll accompany you to the library to get the books. He was extremely drawn to her, and that's what's referred to as first love. He admired her for the way she spoke and thought she was a particularly attractive young lady. He looked at her face and looked into her eyes for a long moment. It's undeniable that Sandro is head over heels in love with Louisa. He addressed her by saying, Is it okay if we go to a restaurant and have a short conversation? There's a fantastic restaurant on the premises. It appeals to me. I'd want to extend an invitation to you. I enjoy talking to you and finding out about your life. All right, let's get going, Louisa said. Louisa had feelings of admirations for Sandro as well. They went to the cafe together and talked for a while. Sandro addressed her as follows. We talked despite the fact that we didn't know each other. Greetings, my name is Sandro. I'm a student at this particular institution. I'm currently enrolled in medical school. What's your name, by the way? What exactly are you studying here? Louisa responded by saying, Obviously, we have some similarities. My name's Louisa. Our names are pretty close to one another. I'm a student here as well, but I'm enrolled in the College of Education. And it was him that added, I'm so delighted we have names that are similar to each other. The timing of this event is quite fortunate. I'm delighted I came across you. Upon first sighting Louisa, Sandro was taken aback by her beauty. They spent a lot of time conversing with one another. Sandro told her about most of the events in his life and explained to her why he decided to go to medical school, telling her, I wanted to help people. Because of my father, I was resolved to pursue a career in medicine. My father served as a source of inspiration and encouragement for me throughout my life. He made numerous sacrifices for me, and I owed it to him to pursue my lifelong dream of becoming a doctor. There were many impoverished people in his village who perished as a result of disease and epidemics at the time. My father explained, adding that there were not many doctors available at the time. As a result, my father is well aware that the poor are afflicted by maladies that cannot be healed by medicine. I'd like to help these individuals. My ambition is to be able to help everyone who's suffering from a variety of ailments. Every person should be free of disease, in my opinion. I want to see everyone recover and be in excellent health as much as possible. She addressed him as follows. I'm overjoyed that you were able to realize your father's ambition. It's wonderful for a person to be able to attain his or her goals in life. Life might be extremely unjust, but we must overcome it. I'm quite pleased with you. I wish you the best of luck in the future. I'd like to share something with you. The place where we're currently dining takes me back to my childhood. When I was a kid, my father used to take my brother and me to that restaurant every Thursday. I longed for my father desperately. He died three years ago this month. I'm delighted that you enjoy the restaurant as much as I do as well. Obviously, we have a great deal in common. 
Every time she talked, Sandro's face lit up with excitement at what she had to say. Louisa accepted Sandro's invitation to meet up with him again in the coming days, and he was delighted. They wanted to get to know one another even better as they progressed in their relationship. Sandro and Louisa became good friends as a result of their encounter. They lend a hand to one another, but like going out together. In truth, they're both in love with each other, but neither of them has ever confessed anything to the other. After a year, Sandro received his bachelor's degree from college. He received the necessary training to work in a hospital. He made the decision to take a new direction in his life. He made the decision to declare to Louisa his feelings for her. He'd arranged a very nice surprise for her, which he shared with her. He spoke with her on the phone, and the two of them agreed that they would go to the restaurant where they usually eat together. When Louisa arrived at the restaurant, she was greeted by a pleasant surprise. Sandro surprised her with flowers and chocolates. Red flowers had been used to beautify the interior of the restaurant. There was no one else in the restaurant at the time of the incident. When Louisa walked into the restaurant, she was greeted by an abundance of flowers and roses. He presented her with a gold ring and told her, I love you. I'm madly in love with you. I've been in love with you since the first time I laid eyes on you. I'm overjoyed to have you as part of my life. You've brought such happiness into my life. I want to be with you for the rest of my life. I'd like to marry you and start a family with you. I hope that we'll be blessed with a child as gorgeous as you. Are you willing to be my wife? Louisa is completely taken aback and overjoyed by the whole thing. As a result of being embarrassed, her cheeks became flushed, and she burst out laughing, putting her hands on her face and said to him, I adore you as well, but I was waiting for you to express your feelings to me first. I'm willing to marry you. She was well aware that marrying her sweetheart would be a significant life change for her. She accepted with great delight, and the thought of spending the rest of her life with her great love filled her with emotion and hope. She accepted with great pleasure. Two months later, they're married in a beautiful ceremony. Everyone from my circle of friends and relatives came. It was a very lovely day. They lead an exceptionally nice existence. They're housed in an extremely opulent apartment complex. Sandro leaves his house early in the morning to go to work at the hospital. He's currently employed as a gynecologist. He works in the field of obstetrics. The task is quite difficult, but he enjoys it tremendously. Louise, on the other hand, chose not to work following their marriage. She's only at home because she's preparing meals for her husband, whom she adores with all her heart. Louisa is not pregnant for several months, despite repeated attempts. She's really depressed as a result of this. Sandro is also disappointed, but he chose not to express his feelings to her in order to not make her miserable. One night, Sandro came home to find his wife crying, and he attempted to soothe her by telling her, I completely understand what you're thinking. I understand why you're crying. I'd want to share something really essential with you. You should be aware that we must accept our fate. We must defy the odds and succeed. We must exercise patience. We must learn to deal with hardship. I understand that you're depressed as a result of the late pregnancy. I shall be by your side at all times. I'll be here to assist you through it. According to my professional opinion, we may be late for this, but in the end, we'll have a beautiful child to show for it. Don't be a crybaby. I still care about you. She addressed him as follows. I wish I had a lovely child of my own. I have a secret desire to possess a piece of you. I'd like for us to have children. I have the impression that I have an issue. It's necessary to investigate me. The following day, he checked Louisa, and it was discovered that she had a serious uterine condition. The fact that she'll require surgery is undeniable, but the nature of the procedure is extremely hazardous and delicate. He explained to her, There's just one issue to deal with, the womb. I will take care of this procedure for you. Trust me on this. I will see to it that you are well. If this operation is a success, we'll have many more children who are as beautiful as you. Never be afraid of anything in your life. It's obvious that this procedure is extremely risky, but he chose not to tell her so as to not annoy or scare her into submission. Sandro was truly apprehensive about doing it. The day of the operation was really difficult for Louisa, who's terrified because she believes she might die. Sandro is also concerned that whatever he does wrong will result in the death of his wife, whom he adores to the point of obsession. It was a really difficult task to complete. He made the decision that he would complete the task flawlessly. He tried everything he could to reassure her. Sandro completed the task with his utmost precision and skill. The operation was a resounding success. Sandro was able to conquer all of his fears. He'd proven himself worthy of the challenge. His wife was overjoyed about it and expressed her delight to him by saying, I'm madly in love with you. I had faith in your abilities. We'll have children and we'll live in love and flowers, he promised her. He had to perform his operation for her, but he couldn't help himself. After several months had gone, Louisa discovered that she was pregnant which was a joyous occasion. This was not accepted normally by her husband, the doctor who threw himself to the ground as a result of his joy. 
she gave birth to a stunningly gorgeous child who was given the name Sia. The family's life was filled with love, kindness, and optimism. This narrative offers us a variety of lessons, including it's hope that allows us to live in safety. It's hope that inspires us to defy and overcome problems. A husband's role is to support his wife during challenging times. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.